Oh! Look at all the stuff scraped on the side there. What if I've diluted the oil so much that this little trip here just completely wears the engine out? Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I just feel like that can't be happening. Welcome back. Or if you're new to the channel, welcome. You've fallen right in the middle of a bunch of oil burning experiments on this 2002 Toyota Corolla here with the 1ZZ FE engine in it. This engine is known for having stuck piston rings and clogged oil drain back holes in the pistons. Now we've done extensive tests to make sure that that actually is the problem with this particular engine. And if you're interested in checking those out, there'll be a playlist right up here in the corner that you can check that out. Now, if you've been following along, we're trying to find the cheapest way to fix the oil burning in this car, even if it means pulling the pistons and putting new pistons and rings in it. We've tried several chemicals. I tried to start with the cheap ones, but I actually kind of botched that up, but you know, anyway. The chemical we're using today though happens to be one of the cheapest chemicals you can get as an engine treatment. This experiment was suggested in a comment by Blackison, and it was the most liked comment of any comment I've ever gotten on any one of my videos that I know of. So that's why we're going to do this experiment today. Blackison said when he did this treatment on his Scion, he noticed a 75% reduction in oil use. Now, if you've been following along, you know I've been keeping up with the oil use in this car, and it uses approximately a quart or a liter of oil every 300 or so miles, right around 300, 300, 320. So it's been pretty consistent 300-ish miles per quart. So we're gonna do the experiment that Blackie San recommended, and after it's complete and we change the oil, then we're gonna drive the car 300 miles and check the dipstick to see how much oil we've used. What usually happens in 300 miles is we fill the oil to the top dot on the dipstick when we change the oil, and then in 300 miles, it is right around the bottom of the dipstick, or lower, usually. All right, now let's use our stick to try to get all our cylinders to halfway between top dead center. Coming up on number one. All right, all of the cylinders are midway right now. Now let's divvy out our concoction. So I've got this glass jar. I couldn't find the mason jar that I used on the seafoam video, but this will work. And here where the sticker was, I put a little mark. We'll put the B12 chem tool in up to that line and pour some in each of the cylinders. Put the funnel in number one. Full disclosure, the engine is actually warm right now. I was just driving it. For those who like the scientific side of it, you probably shouldn't add anything cold to the cylinder because you could cause something to crack or get damaged. But I'm just going to pour this in slowly so it doesn't run. Oh, there we go. Get it all out of there. Let's move on to cylinder number two. Number three. Ooh, gotta open another one. And number four. Now we just need to get down there and turn the crank around five times. So as I turn it, I'm gonna watch the crank pulley and make sure my top dead center mark passes by five times.
Oh man, well, you'll miss that. It just shot out a whole bunch of Berryman's out of spark plug number one. I'll back off so hopefully you can see some of this. All right, oh, really quick, let me show you. There is the notch I'm talking about. So I will watch that go around five times and we'll know we had five complete revolutions of the engine. Number three that just spewed like a geyser. All right, there's one full rotation. There's two full rotations. Three full rotations. Four full rotations. Ugh, seems to be getting harder. I wonder if it's because this stuff is cleaned the lubricant clean the oil off the cylinder walls ah or maybe I'm just getting weaker as I go and five full rotations now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it a half a rotation so that it'll be ready to add the chemical in next time so all right that's about halfway there's a lot of wind blowing around here hope it's not messing up the mic all right, I'm just going to take some paper towel and stuff it at the entrance of each spark plug well, just at the top. Just keep anything else from falling down in there. And maybe cut back on some of the evaporation. Okay, the time is 10.25. So we need to come back about 425 and rotate the engine five more times every six hours. All right, well, it's been a little more than six hours. So let's turn the crank five times. Okay, I'm actually going to go the extra mile here just in case anybody thinks we've lost any from evaporation or because the engine was warm when I poured it in the first time. So I'm just going to put a little douse and each cylinder again. And now we'll turn the crank. All right. All right, there goes my tick mark. We'll just say that's the zero point. And five rotations. Now we'll go about halfway around again. Maybe I only want to go a quarter of the way around. There we go. All right, they're at about the halfway point. And the time is 4.56. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We'll come back at 11 o'clock and turn the crank again. Just an FYI, I normally go to bed at 9.30. All right, why not give them another little splash? We want to do this right, right? Let's turn the crank five times. And there's five. And good night. See you at five o'clock in the morning ish running a little behind but that's okay because we're gonna let it go over the 24 hours anyways all right another little douse of b12 i wonder how much of this is going to evaporate or how much is going to be in the crankcase diluting the oil for when we go on the interstate i guess we'll see Ah, what could it hurt, right? All right, well, let's turn the crank. So
So it is 5.36 right now. 6.36, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1136 so around lunchtime the experiment will be over we'll probably let it sit until about three o'clock i'm going to try to get off work early and then i'll be able to take it for a drive so we'll go over the 24 hours for sure but i'll catch y'all later oh yeah I put the paper towels back okay it is 346 so it has been well past 24 hours so we're about ready to test drive it. We just need to make sure that there is no liquid in the cylinders because we don't want to hydrolock it. There are lots of ways to get it out, but I'm just going to take the scope and look down in each cylinder. We want to make sure there's no liquid in there because if there is, liquid can't be compressed to an extent and you could damage your engine, your valves, etc. So I'm going to get the scope and check it out. Cylinder number one. Well, I don't see any liquid floating on top, but that appears to be very high up in the cylinder. Let's, let's check out two and three. They should be pretty low right now. All right, there's cylinder number two. All the liquid's gone except for what's in the dish on the piston. Let's see that up close. Interesting. Look at all the stuff scraped on the side there. See that at the top of the screen? Piston looks like some carbon is scraped off. That's pretty interesting. This is cylinder number three. Wow. Cylinder number three looks clean. Clean and dry. That is kind of wild. All right. Let me turn the crank just a little bit. There's a little bit of crud up there at the top of the screen on that one as well. What's that? Alright, cylinder number four. Alright, no liquid to speak of except for a little on the dish there. The piston. And look, more carbon crud at the top that is really interesting look at all that carbon crud if I can bend this a little and get over there look at that that is some interesting stuff isn't it it is to me and there some is around there there some is at the back of number two and there's some at the back of number three three is so dry all right well we don't have to worry about hydrolocking it so we'll just put the spark plugs back in hook the battery up check our oil just to make sure we have enough oil in it i know it's pretty diluted we used almost two full cans of the kim tool b12 so i know comment below Check the oil. Ah, looks like it's full. Now we'll add a little bit more. Let that drain down a minute. We are full to the top, it looks like. Now let's crank it up and take it for a drive. Yet again, I forgot to take the wrench off the crank. Seat belt. Okay, let's try this again. Oh 
Lost. All right, we're running. We got 116 on the dashboard, which is wrong, but we need to get out there 60 miles an hour in third gear for 20 minutes. Oh man, it's smoking like crazy, isn't it? Up all these people, they like backing off. Hear the exhaust spitting back there. Now, maybe I overdid it with the amount of B12, I don't know. but I just wanted to make sure we got the best bang for our buck and nobody said, I don't think you added enough. So. All right, we're in third gear. 60 miles an hour. 65 miles an hour. So we're not redlining it. We're at about 4,600 RPM. And it's 122 on this clock. So 32, 42, turn around at 42, and come back. can feel the engine pulsing like it's missing occasionally. Holding above 60. Man, I just keep feeling it miss now. What if I've diluted the oil so much that this little trip here just completely wears the engine out? And maybe it was a good engine before this, and now it's going to be worn out. Oh well. Worth it for science, right?
have passed our 20 minutes, so we can officially back off if we want, but I'm going to continue to go 60 in third gear until I get to my exit, which is one mile away. Okay, I just fell below 60. We're going to call that the end of the 20 minutes. the end of the trip. Well, weather and work have not been very cooperative, so it's actually two days later. Who wants to see what the cylinders look like after all that? Here's a look at the spark plugs for those that want to see them. Okay, now let's take a look at the cylinders. So, there is cylinder number one. I don't remember what it looked like the first time, but uh, I'll try to bring up a comparison. Do cylinder number four. All right, there's number four. Still a lot of oil in the cylinders. But no carbon to speak of. This is cylinder number two. Still got a lot of carbon in that one. out cylinder number three lots of oil but no carbon so cylinder number two seems to be the only one that still has a ton of carbon on it but it doesn't seem to have as large of a puddle of oil as the rest of them. All right, let's do our little kink and closely at the edge. This is where the carbon deposits were. Looked like it had broken off on all the cylinders. There were some carbon deposits right there at the edge of the piston right there. That's what it looks like now. Look at all that cross hatching. That's number two. We'll do number three. That's where the carbon debris was. Now it's just an oil puddle. Okay, now we'll do number one. I guess one has a good bit of carbon on the piston. But here's the back of it where the debris was. Now it just has a little oil on it. Let's do number four. There's the back. Just oil. Still got lots of oil in the cylinders. All right, let's see what the oil looks like. So I'll put up a comparison of what it looked like before the 20 minutes of high RPM driving. Looks like we used a lot of oil. Now I'm gonna change the oil and filter. Yes, the oil does smell like B12 Chem Tool. Fresh oil. And yes, I'm using 5W30 because I've used 5W30 from the beginning of these experiments. I know a lot of people think I should go up thickness for the oil burning, but that would throw off everything we've done so far. So let's take a look at this oil. That's pretty black compared to how it was to start with. See that up close.
We just ran the engine so that we know there's oil in the filter and now it's on perfectly level ground. I'm going to top off the oil. I'm going to make sure it's exactly the top dot on the oil dipstick and then we'll have a reference to see how much oil we're burning. So we are just barely at the bottom dot at the moment. So we probably need to add about a quart more. So while we let that drain into the pan, let's look at this jug here. You can see, I hope, we've used exactly four quarts. So we have exactly one quart left. So we are exactly up to the top dot. Okay. Let's start putting some miles on it. Oh, but before we do that, we gotta check the mileage. Duh. So this is the trip B. That's what we usually record the oil on. So I'm gonna reset that. And it is 185.747. You can see I'm parked in exactly the same place I was when we filled it up to begin with. Totally level, same exact spot. I have to admit, I'm not very hopeful. As you know, we always use about a quart, please pardon my cold, and 300 miles. So in 300 miles, it usually goes from this dot on the dipstick to this dot on the dipstick. So I've just wiped it off. It's been parked here for a couple of minutes, so the oil's run back down in there. Let's see what it looks like. Huh. <laughs> oh man. Am I seeing this right? Am I seeing that right? Right there? My fingernail is? What? Let's try this again. Before I put that back in there, let's take a good look at this. All right, this is what it looks like. Okay. In, out. It is right there. It is right there. Let's flip it over. Right there. Let's do it one more time. Put a little light over here. Oh my goodness. It is. It is. It's right there. Just a fraction below the top dot. Oh, wow. So I'm not sure how much oil usage that was, but it looks like almost none. I mean, it's like a fraction. We've gone, what, 308 miles, 309 miles? From the way it looks, we might be able to go at least 1,200 miles on a quart. I have to admit, I'm shocked. Every time I pull the dipstick out of this, I totally expect to see it drop. <laughs> Every time. And for me to pull the dipstick after 300 miles and see that, I mean, I just feel like that can't be happening. Well, for now, it looks like 
kind of in a holding pattern. So I'm going to guess I'm going to have a lot of interesting comments on this one. I totally was not expecting that. Now, of course, this could be a total fluke. We could check it next time and it will have just guzzled oil. But I have to say, this is the first time ever that I've checked it in 300 miles and it not been at least halfway down between the two. At least. So, uh, yeah. It's looking positive for Berryman's B12 chem tool. Looking very positive. Now, what did we do different from Blackie San's recommendations? Well, I don't know how much he intended us to actually pour in there. He didn't put like ounces or splash or anything that I recall. Maybe he did. And I used almost two full cans. So is that what did it? Did you need that much? I did lose a lot when I turned it over. A bunch ejected out the spark plug holes. Just out of cylinders one and three though, I think. So that's interesting too. At least I think so. I added a little extra every time I turned the engine over. And in the end, it meant there was almost two full cans was in the crankcase when we were doing the 20 minute, 60 mile an hour high revving drive. Let's recap. I removed the spark plugs. I added several ounces of Berryman's B12 chem tool to each cylinder. I turned the engine over five times every six hours, adding a little Berryman's each time I did it. And then at the end, we drove the car before changing the oil for 20 minutes in third gear at at least 60 miles an hour. And then we changed the oil and filter. So stay tuned. So if you happen to see that clip at the end of the last video, I had just gotten to work after being rear-ended by the Tacoma and I went right inside and looked up on my computer some parts and I found this turn signal part and I texted the guy right back and told him the part would be this much. Can you just Venmo it to me? And he instantly Venmoed it to me and I got the part already. So it actually worked out okay. OEM heavy duty gasket on there. All right, see how to get this off. Please excuse the mess. Looks like I just need to remove a couple of nuts. Ah, I see. One more. One sided. There we go. There are the two parts. Exact same Toyota markings. And this comes with the bulbs already installed. So cool. I'm gonna compare this light over here. See how much it sticks out. Test it really quick. Beautiful. I'll have to find one for this. And that's it.